praise the Lord and welcome you join New Beginnings Community Church. Our pastor is Pastor William Dickey Sr. Please join us in with us as we sing Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. We do not own the right to the kingdom. and every one of you that have joined us, joined the fellowship with us on tonight. And thank God for you. I know that there are other places that you could have been, and so you have elected to fellowship with us, and we thank God for you for that. And we pray that his word will bless your heart, mind, soul, and your life. We have another lesson today, still in the book of Romans, still dealing with Paul. We have moved down to the 12th chapter, very, very familiar passage of scriptures, 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2, they are on the worksheet, 
We don't have a worksheet. They are in your Bibles. I'll be reading uh, King James only tonight. You can follow in whatever translation that you, you use, and we'll, we'll get there. We have another, another lesson where the Holy Ghost uh, is, is getting... Getting the body prepared. The Holy Ghost is trying to get the body prepared Amen. to meet the bridegroom. The bridegroom is coming. Amen. And we have to we have to be prepared. We have to be prepared. Mm -hmm. We waited, we've been waiting long enough. We have to be prepared to meet the bridegroom. And so uh, the word of God tonight is just continues to contribute to that fact to get us prepared. The scripture says that he would uh, now to him that is able to present us to himself. And so we're going to pray and then we're going to get into the lesson about here. Be gracious in heaven, Father, the precious name of Jesus. We come tonight thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you for mine to gather, to assemble together, to study up your word. We pray, Father, you said that where two or three would gather together that in your name that you would be in the midst. So we give honor to the spirit of Christ in our midst tonight. We thank you for your presence, Lord God. We thank you for your word. We pray that you would move in this place tonight according to your will, according to our need. Open up our hearts, minds, and understanding that we would be what you have purposed us to be. We will praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We thank God once again. Uh, the 12th chapter of the book of Romans, verses 1 and 2. Verse 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Excuse me, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What we're dealing with tonight. Our focus thought tonight comes from the second verse, from the portion of scripture where it says, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We're going to break that down a little bit, but before we get into that, we want to look at the contrast. And that says, and be not conformed to this world. So here we have Paul. Here we have Paul writing to the Christians in Rome. Probably would study say predominantly Gentile. There are some Israelites in there and so forth and on. Predominantly Gentiles. But what Paul what Paul is doing, he is, he's, he's urging, he's begging, he's pleading with the members of the body. He said, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God which is your reasonable service. Holy is, holy is sanctification. Holy means, sanctification means set apart. Acceptable unto God. Say, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, that word transform, as it pertains to this lesson tonight, is to change the nature, function, or condition of. It is to convert, it is
is to undergo transformation, undergo a transformation. Paul is urging the body of Christ to be transformed, to be changed in, in nature, function, con condition, to, to, uh, to be converted or to be holy or to be sanctified, to undergo transformation or, you know, to, to go on to perfection, to go on to change, to go on to maturity. This is what he's urging the body of Christ to do, to be transformed. What he is urging the body of Christ not to do is to be conformed to the world. And that was that word conform would suggest to us to be fashioned like unto or by association or companionship, friendship, to be similar or identical. Also to be in agreement or harmony. This is what conform means, conform means. Conform means to be fashioned like unto, to be in agreement or to be in harmony to be in, in companionship or friendship, to be similar or identical. Right. So we are, at, he's urging the body of Christ not to be conformed to the world, but be transformed. He says, by the renewing of your mind. Now, the understanding for you and I is that the transformation comes in the mind. Comes in the mind. Now, mind suggests to you and I in this lesson moral uh, understanding, cognition, thought, heart, purpose. The aspect of a person that enables them to think, perceive, feel, and experience consciousness, the mind. So, as members of the body of Christ, we are urged uh, not to be fashioned like the world, not to be. Uh, in agreement or in harmony in the world. But we are urged to be transformed. We are urged to be changed. Uh, we, are, we are urged to undergo transformation uh, of the mind. And it has to be in the mind because the mind, not only is the mind the heart, but the heart is the center of, of your being. It's the center of your being where uh, where it says your uh, your understanding, your cognition, your thoughts, your thinking, your uh, the aspect of a person that enables them to think, perceive, feel, and experience consciousness. This has to be transformed. This has to be changed from the world uh, to God. Because he said that is our reasonable service. Holy, acceptable, which is our reasonable service. Now we in verse two, our focus is verse two. So after he after he, he is urging you and I to be transformed by the renewing of the mind, he says, This is this is what we are to do. He said that we may prove that we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In order to prove something, you have to examine it, you have to scrutinize it, you have to test it in order to prove it. 
So, if we are not transformed in the mind, well then how will we prove, or how will we, how will we prove what is that good and perfect and acceptable will of God? Hear, hear, hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We cannot prove the will of God, the acceptable, perfect will of God, being conformed to the world. Don't kid yourself. We cannot do it. We cannot do it. We have to be transformed. We have to be changed in, in nature, in function. We have to be changed. We have to undergo this transformation because our moral understanding has to change. More importantly, our purpose has to change. Our thought, our thinking has to change. Finally, brother, uh, he said, think, think, on, think on these things. Think on these things. If there be, uh, he said, whatsoever is, is just, whatsoever is, is lovely, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is, is true, uh, whatsoever is, is, has virtue, and whatsoever is praiseworthy or whatever, and the list goes on. They said, think on these things. It's not in my mind right now because it's not on here, but we have to transform our thinking. We have to transform our moral understanding. We have to transform uh, our, our thought. We have to do it because that is the only way to prove or to scrutinize or to test what is that or examine what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. In other words, uh, the just shall live by faith. <laughs> the just shall live by faith. We we have to get out of the we have to get out of the thinking that somewhere and somehow in there that our righteousness or our deeds or whatever is acceptable with God. You have to get out of that thinking. Scripture says the just shall live by faith. Let's get into the lesson. Psalms 51 and 10. Psalms 51 and 10. It says, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. This, this is the Psalm of David. This is the psalm of David praying unto the Lord to create in him a clean heart, O God, and to renew a right spirit in me. This is after the prophet Nathan had confronted David about his act of adultery or fornication, whichever one. His act of adultery with Bathsheba when he went into Bathsheba. And when the conviction, when the conviction of the Lord pricked his heart, he didn't try to cover it. He didn't try to cover it. He didn't try to justify it. He didn't say, well, I'm the king. I can have as many women as I want. He didn't try to do that. When the conviction Pricked his heart. His prayer was created in me. If you go and you read Psalms 51, you would see David's lament, his prayer, his confession. He was wanted, he wanted the Lord to, to purge him and to clean him and watch him with his sop, all this good stuff. Because he wanted to be he wanted to be transformed. 
his moral, he, he wanted to be transformed in his mind. His moral understanding had got kind of flawed. <laughs> his moral understanding, he, his mind, his purpose, his thinking, he needed, he needed to undergo transformation. So he said, Lord, created me a clean heart. He said, created me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. As the body of Christ, this is what we must do when we find ourselves under conviction. We must acknowledge it or confess it to the Lord, ask for the renewing of a, a, our spirit, and repent. Repentance, repentance brings uh, forgiveness. You can read Luke 24, chapter, verse 47. Jesus said that uh, repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name, beginning at Jerusalem. We have to come to repentance. We have to come to a change, a transformation of the mind or the moral understanding or that aspect of a person that enables us to think properly, to perceive properly, to feel properly and experience this consciousness. Our, our thinking, our perception, and our feeling has to be uh, has to be what what Paul would say uh, scrutinized or tested, where we may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God is not accepting everything, although although we have although we have a habit of, of putting everything on God, <laughs> but God is not accepting everything. He's only accepting that that is good and acceptable and perfect. Mm -hmm. He's only he's only accepting that is inspired or come about by a transformed mind. Yeah. Let's go a little deeper. Second Corinthians four sixteen. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish. Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Our, we have to understand our outward man, our physical body, our fleshly body, it is perishing day by day. Our strength is renewed by the Holy Ghost, by the, in the inner man. In the inner man. This is where we are renewed. This is why we must transform the mind. We can come to repentance and we can receive the Holy Ghost. And we can receive the baptism in Jesus' name in water for remission of sin. And we can receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost speaking in other tongues as the Spirit give us. But if we don't transform the mind, we will still fall a little short or we will still be conformed to the world, even with the new birth. Even with the new birth, we must still transform the mind because at he said, although the outward man perishes, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. We, we, the Holy Ghost renews our strength in the inward man. And we have to transform our mind. Ephesians 4 23. It said, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. There it is right there. This is 
to the church at Ephesus, to the Ephesians, to the members of the body. It's not enough to be born again. Although, although it is a must. But what but what comes with that is that we must trans we must uh, be renewed in the spirit of our mind. We must be transformed. We must undergo transformation of, of the nature of the new man, the nature of him that created us in the image of righteousness and true holiness. We must transform the spirit of our mind that way we would function and operate uh, according to according to Paul would say that good and acceptable will of God. Right. We have to understand what's going on. Colossians 3 and 10 and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. That was those jump the gun. <laughs> jump the gun a little bit. Colossians 3 and 10 says and have put on the new man, and have put on the new man, transform, undergo transformation, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. What's knowledge? Knowledge is understanding. Mm -hmm. So the member, we have to understand this is to the Colossian, this is to the Colossian church. Members of the body of Christ, we must put on the new man. The scripture said that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Mm -hmm. It says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. We cannot put on the new man and still be conformed to the world. Still have the same worldly uh, nature. Still we cannot be in agreement with the world. Conform me in agreement with the world. Conform me fashion like unto the world. Conform me in harmony with the world. Conform me in companionship or in friendship with the world. Now I'm reiterating that again because we're going to get a little deeper in that in a few minutes. Because as the body of Christ, we have to understand what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Everything that we everything that we offer God is not good, is not acceptable, is not perfect. It is just uh, we have to understand what uh, what is acceptable. That's why God said prove. He said that that way, he said, the second verse says, that ye may prove, that ye may prove what is that good. When you prove something, you examine it, you test it. It goes under scrutiny. scrutiny. You have to. How, how, how do you prove God? Okay, wait on God. Wait on God. When God come through, then you prove it. But if you could, but if you are conformed to the world, and you don't, and 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 your your theology or your your practices, you don't wait on God. You go get it yourself. You will never prove God. You can never prove God. You will never see what's acceptable, what what's good. Because just because we're big enough to do a thing, like I said, doesn't mean that God is accepted. You have to prove God. Scripture said, though he was a son, learned he obedience by the things he suffered. The things that he endured, the things that he permitted. Suffer means endure, permitted. The things that he went through. Though he was, though he was a son, learned he obedience by the things that he suffered. 
You have to hear what the Spirit has said to the church. You and I don't learn obedience by going out and being conformed to the world and then saying, oh, God bless me. No, God didn't bless you. You bless you. No, if God didn't bless you. You bless you. The perfect and acceptable will of God is simple obedience. It was from creation. All they had to do was not eat the trees in the midst of the garden. The tree of uh, good and evil, or tree of knowledge, or whatever it was, and the tree of life. He said, of all the other trees, you can freely eat. Simple obedience is all he's ever asked. Simple obedience to God's word will prove your faith. People say they people say, uh, can you see faith? Yeah, you can see faith. Obey the word. Right. Obey the word is seeing faith. Uh, proving God. If you obey the word. You can prove God. If you don't obey the word, that's why so many people fall out with God. Because it, they have a lack of transformation. Uh, they have a lack of, of, of change of the mind. The transformation has to be in the mind. And the mind is the moral understanding. Okay, let's run. Uh, Titus. Titus 2 and 12. Titus 2 and 12. Teaching us, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. We're talking about trans being transformed <laughs> by the renewing of your mind. Teaching us that denying ungodly lust and worldly lust, we are to deny ungodliness and we are to deny worldly lust. We are not to try to justify it and make it good and acceptable will of God. It will never be. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We are, we, the Word of God teaches us, the Holy Ghost teaches us to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts. It said, we should live soberly. That soberly is, we should live sober too, but. <laughs> <laughs> That soberly there is, is, is talking about uh, wellness of mind, sound mind. Yes. Yes. We're talking about more moral understanding, sound mind. We should li live soberly, uh, uh, a sound mind, a healthy mind, faithful mind, righteously and godly in this present world. The Lord is the Lord is coming back, and the scripture says the scripture said it just like the days of Noah. It said they were they were marrying, they were giving in marriage, they were drinking, they were eating. It says up until the time or the day Noah entered the ship. They never transformed their mind. They never changed. They did that. Up until the day Noah entered the ship. Ain't that something? People are going to be conformed to this world up until the day when the Lord catch us out of here. We've gotten we've gotten too too uh intelligent in our own conceit. Some of us are waiting for it. Uh, Signs, he said, it's, it's a wicked and adulterous generation that seeketh the sign. Some of us are waiting for signs of things to happen, and then we're going to try to change. 
Let me let me remind you, he said he's coming back like a thief in the night. So if the if the call of the Lord is on your life now, now is when your transformation can act. No man cometh unto unto the Father. No man cometh unto Jesus except the Father draw him. Stop falling for these false teachers that's telling you that you can accept Christ in your heart whenever you get ready or whatever. That's not the Bible. Jesus said, no man cometh unto me, although the Father sent me, no man cometh unto me except the Father draw him. And when the drawing or the calling of the Lord is over your life, you cannot justify it. You either answer the call or you reject it. But you have to understand this one thing. Every one of us that, that live, every, every individual that was alive, uh, God is going to have a witness against us. There's not going to be one person that's alive that's going to say, well, I didn't know. You don't, yeah, he said every knee is going to bow. And every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. God has a, 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 he has a witness for each and every one of us. And we cannot continue to reject the call of God. God's word, God's word comes forth. He said the enemy coming, not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Jesus said that he come that we might have life and that more abundantly. But here is, here is the problem. The problem is we are so conformed to the world that we think the life he's talking about is cars and houses and carnal things. This is why he tells you not, do not be conformed to the world. Because what would it profit a man to gain this whole world and lose his soul? Or what can a man give in exchange for his soul? He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these other things, he said, will be added unto you. Goes back to the focus, though. Prove, prove, prove that. Amen. Prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You have to learn to wait on God. Or we can never prove it. Or if we if we never wait on God, then we will never we will never undergo the transformation. You remember uh, you remember Lazarus. Yes. Lazarus died. Mm -hmm. Amen. And one of his sisters ran and got word to Jesus. Told the Lord, told the Lord, He whom you love is dead. And the Bible said that he he abided there a couple more days. <laughs> All right. He abided there a couple more days. Why? Because he had to prove them. He had to he had to allow them to prove what is that good <laughs> and acceptable and perfect will of God. You've got to learn to wait on God. He didn't get in a hurry and jump in front. He said he told him. She said, if you would have been here, my brother wouldn't. Have he wouldn't have died. He, you know, he still be alive. He said, your brother's going to rise again. She said, I know in the resurrection. He said, I am the resurrection. <laughs> we act like we don't know who God is when it comes to our stuff. <laughs> uh, when it comes to our stuff, we act like, Lord, you know, I'm going to go ahead and take care of this. When it comes to our situation, when it comes to our, our, our circumstance, we like Martha or Mary, whichever one it was. We like, if you'd have been here, he said, yeah, he said, I, I am the life. I am the resurrection. All right, that ain't what we're talking about. Let me get off that. <laughs> Titus, Titus 3 and 5. Titus 3 and 5 says, not by works of righteousness which we have done. That's that's what I've been trying to tell you. 
this is the problem. This is the problem when you are conformed to the work. You you think it's about the works you do. You see so many Christians posting about we gave clothes to a thousand people, we gave food to a hundred thousand people, we gave that to the that to that. This is what's hap this is what happens when you are conformed to the world. Because the world told you that that was an act of Christianity. Jesus said, the poor, you're going to have it with you always. So you're going to run out of <laughs> You're going to run out of clothes. He said, and I'm not making light of that. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Don't, let, don't, don't misunderstand me. That's a good thing. But the point is, our works is not what's going to save us. But that's a good thing. That, that's a good thing to do. Yeah. Don't misunderstand me at all. That's a good thing to do. And, uh, and we should do it if we are able to do it. But if we're not able to do it or if we're not in a situation to do it, don't feel bad because somebody's bragging and boasting. That's not, that's not where it is. That's the point of it. People boast and brag about what they're doing so gloriously. If you're not careful, it'll, it'll almost make you feel bad because you don't do it and you can't do it. That's not salvation. That's not what we're doing. That's, that's still misunderstanding. It's not what we're doing. We are not to be conformed to this world. We're to be transformed. You, you, you and I are definitely supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. We're definitely supposed to do that. But we 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 not supposed to uh, blow no horn about it. We not supposed to go on the mountaintop and, and, and sound it off. You uh, Titus three and five, Titus three and five. Listen, listen to what Paul is telling Titus. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done. They righteous works, but not by them that we've done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> this is how it happened. By his mercy. By the washing of regeneration, he, 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 he transformed us, regenerated us, and the, and, and the renewing or the restoring of the Holy Ghost. Now, we have a big issue in Christianity because half Christians don't believe in the Holy Ghost and half us Christians do. <laughs> those of you that do not believe in the Holy Ghost let me remind you of Paul in the first verse that we read that I beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of God we just read Paul told Titus that but according to his mercy he saved us God's mercy is poured out it's available to you and I now because uh, if we are not regenerated, if we're not washed, and baptism deals with washing, and we're not going to try to get into all that, but washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. Those of you that don't believe in the Holy Ghost, my urge, my urge, and my 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 plea to you to to this night is transform your mind, transform, repent of that thinking, transform, repent of that thinking because you 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 just read it. You and I are not saved 
by the righteous works that we done, or we do, we just read it, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. My urge, <laughs> my plea to you is stop rejecting the Holy Ghost and ask the Lord to give it to you. You and I will not be saved without it. You just read it. It is not by works of righteousness. You're going to work yourself out. It's by his mercy. He saved us by the washing and regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. We can't make that any plain. James 4 and 4. It said, ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. Read it again. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God. It opposes God. It's hostility towards God. It's hostile towards God. You and I cannot be conformed to this world. Woo! You and I cannot be conformed to this world. We have become, the moment we do that, we have become enemies. The scripture concludes and says, Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. He said, friendship of the world is enmity with God. It opposes with God. It's hostile toward God. So, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. We cannot be conformed to the world. We cannot be conformed to the world. That is not proven that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Uh, last one, and we're going to give you a, well, the last two in one, and we'll give you the other. First John, second chapter, verse 15 and 16. And let's read this with understanding. It's going to bring us home. Verse 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. So therefore, if we are conformed to the world, we have to stop uh, declaring or, or claiming that God is blessing you. Mm -hmm. Hear what you're saying. What 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 you what you proclaiming? It doesn't agree with the word of God. He said, "If he said, if any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him." So how can <laughs> Now, I understand that it rains on the just as well as the unjust. I understand that. But the more important picture is this. Why call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? That's what's going to come back to bite you. He's going to say, he's going to say, depart from me. I never knew you. You work as of iniquity. He, they say, oh, Lord, we healed the sick. We raised the dead. We cast out demons in your name. He, he, depart from me. I never knew you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. If any man loved the world, if you, if you are conformed to this world, the love of the Father is not in that. It is not in that. You and I have to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. 
Verse 16 says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. All for all that is in the world. This is why you and I are urged not to be conformed to the world. He said, because for all that is in the world, it's just the lust of the flesh, it's the lust of the eye, and it's the pride of life. Now, you've got black pride, you got white pride, you got Hispanic pride, you got LGBTQT pride, or whatever you got all. Listen to what the word is telling you. That's all that's in the world is pride. You got pride, you got, well, I'm an astronaut, you pride, I'm a doctor, that's pride. I'm an athlete. I'm, a, I'm a, a billionaire athlete. Pride. That's all that's in the world is pride. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye. The love of the Father is not in that. He said, but that is of the world. This is why we are not to be conformed to the world. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter about, he said, fret not yourself about evildoers bringing things to pass. Don't fret yourself about evildoers bringing things to pass. He said, they're, they're, they're gonna be like the grass. They're gonna be soon cut down. We have to understand the Lord, the Lord is soon to come. Yeah. And if we are not, and if we are not concerned about being transformed by the renewing of our mind, It's going to be scary situation. So as, so, so as it is always, I encourage you to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sin and allow the Lord to fill you with the Holy Ghost. Paul told Titus, this is how we are saved, by the mercies, by the washing of regeneration, and of the renewing of the Holy Ghost. We must be born again of water and spirit. Amen. Jesus is soon to come. And he said, I'm coming like a thief in the night. He said, if the, if the good man knew what time the thief was coming, he said he would stand guard and would not let his house be ran through. <laughs> All right. This is why he, but he said, the moral of the story is you got to be ready. You got to always be ready. Because we don't know when the Lord is coming. And don't put it off. Don't keep saying, well, maybe tomorrow, maybe tomorrow. You have to, uh, you have to come to, to the Lord when the calling of the Lord is over. You, you can't put it off. You, you and I, we don't, uh, we don't handle God like we may handle our children or something. That's not how this works. When the Lord is calling you, then your day and your time of salvation is now. And if you're going to be saved, then you have to answer the call. But, like I say, we give you up. We're gonna give you up. We pray that you would uh, receive something from the Word of God tonight. We're going to pray and we're going to give you up. We're bowed heads. Be gracious to Heavenly Father in the precious name of Jesus. We come tonight just thanking you once again for your tender mercy and your kindness. We thank you, Lord God. We know this by your mercy, Lord, that you have saved us by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, Lord. We thank you for the forgiveness of our sins by the baptism in Jesus' name. We, we thank you for the gift of eternal life. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for delivering us from sin, Lord God. We just thank you for all that your hands have provided. We thank you for being the Lord of our life. We thank you for going away to prepare a place that where we are that we may be also. We thank you, Lord God, that you're going to come and receive us unto yourself one day. We ask that you will continue to lead us and guide us with thy truth. We know thy word is true. Take it from this place, Lord, never from your presence. 
And in fact, again, at the appointed time, look down on each and every one of us according to your will, Lord God, according to your favor, according to our needs. And we'll praise you and glorify you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.